Welcome back to the channel, y'all. I know it's been a while since I've posted, but we're out here with a banger of a video today. We're gonna be going over the top five hardest AP classes for upperclassmen to take. So just to be clear, when I say upperclassmen, I do mean 11th and 12th graders. So without further ado, well, let's get started. Alrighty, so coming in at number five in the AP class draft today, we have AP Physics 2. So quick disclaimer, AP Physics 2, I like to say, is actually a little bit easier than AP Physics 1, which is one of the hardest underclassmen AP classes to take. Now, AP Physics 2 is very difficult in its content. However, it is slightly less content overall to cover than AP Physics 1 and slightly less content than AP Physics C. Hint, hint for later in the list. Um, but anyways, with AP Physics 2, uh, it's really, really difficult because unlike AP Physics 1, where you've had some general knowledge actually um, with kinematics, um, momentum, and things like that, AP Physics 2 is a lot more with electricity, magnetism, and concepts that you haven't really seen before. So unless you've literally taken AP Physics 2 before, or like an honors version of the same class, you literally haven't seen these topics before, which makes this class so, so difficult. So in order to do well in this class, I'd really try to make sure that you keep the rest of your classes not as difficult. So take some easier classes so that you have more time to dedicate. Um, from what I've noticed with AP Physics 2, you really have to do the practice problems every single day or during the prescribed time your teacher says you don't want to get behind in order to survive in this class. Now coming in at number four is AP US History. Now AP US History is by far the hardest history class. So in comparison to AP World History, AP European History, if you wanna throw in AP Human Geography up there, AP Gov up there, any of those other more history social science courses, this is probably the cream of the crop in terms of difficulty. Um, one, it's the lowest five rate out of all the history classes, though they did make the five rate a little bit easier this year, but it's still one of the hardest to do well on. Um, on the AP test. I mean, more than that, it's just so much content. It really is. I mean, it's 700 years of history and it's really, really in depth. I know you guys are probably thinking, oh, I learned, well, I learned US history in eighth grade or in sixth grade or in seventh grade. Well, it's a lot more content. So don't just come into this class thinking it's super, super easy. Um, some of the things that make this class really difficult, it's very reading heavy. I mean, you're gonna be assigned 20, 30 pages of reading a week. If you're not a good reader, I'd really suggest um, figuring out a way to sort of read faster. If you listen better by voice, I'd recommend getting some sort of speech to text app like Speechify or something like that. Um, that can typically speed up the process. So that's one of my recommendations. Um, and more than that, you have to memorize so, so much information and you have to sort of remember that from the beginning to the end of the year to do well on that AP test. Um, so that's really what makes this class so, so difficult. All right, so coming in at number three, I know some people are gonna be expecting this to be a little bit higher on my list but I'm gonna give this to AP Calculus BC and I'll tell you why once I get to the number two and number one slots. So the reason AP Calculus BC is even on the top five in the first place um, is that calculus is honestly just inherent. inherently it's a difficult subject. Uh, you know, you are expected to know, you're expected to have mastered math for the past four years of high school. You're expected to remember that knowledge all throughout this course because you're gonna take the calculus knowledge and you're essentially gonna apply it uh, into every single function, logarithmic functions, exponential functions, rational functions that you've learned all throughout high school and maybe middle school. So just being able to know that all at once is what makes this class so hard. It's also a lot of uh, a lot of new content that you're learning at once. Uh, something our teacher told us was that in AP Calculus BC, if you think about it as this is like the X amount of workload you're doing in a year, AP Calculus BC is 1.5 times X that amount of workload. So it's a lot more work than AP Calculus AB, which makes this class so difficult. What I recommend doing to succeed in this class in general is before you go there on the first day of school, or even right now, since we're about a few weeks into the school year, just review um, all the pre-calc and algebra two concepts that you learned. Those are like the main two things you need to know here. Your rational functions, how to find the holes, vertical asymptotes, your trig functions, um, knowing all your rules and laws of those, um, you'll be a little bit better in shape for this class. Now, coming in at number two, I'm gonna go ahead and give this slot to AP Chemistry. Now, why AP Chemistry over AP Calculus BC in terms of difficulty? Why? Two things. Number one, if your school doesn't make you take honors chem before AP Chem, that means you're gonna be less prepared to take AP Chem. It's as simple as that. Versus if you did AP Calculus BC, pretty much all schools require you to take pre-calc, out of or two, et cetera, before you take that, right? Now, even if your school does make you take an honors chem or, or an on-level chem before you take AP Chem, 
What makes this class so difficult is that second semester, especially, is a lot more difficult than the second semester of AP Calculus BC. The second semester is where in AP Chem, it's all new concepts. So even if you did take Honors Chem, it's all pretty much new concepts, pretty much. And it's a lot of concepts to go in all at once. Um, excuse me, from thermodynamics to electrochemistry, it's so much, so much new content. And it's almost like reading a different language. At least with the AP Calculus BC, you've been doing math right, for five, basically your whole life, for your, yeah, since you were five. Um, but with AP Chem, you only had really a year to figure out if you're really good at the subject. So what I've seen with a lot of people is that they'll take AP Chem thinking they, oh, I was good in honors chem, but then they realize, oh, maybe this isn't for me about halfway through the year, but, but then you can't really drop it. And so you're kind of stuck in the situation. And so I feel like people make a little bit worse decisions on whether they should take AP Chem or not. Um, and overall, I think this class is typically taken by juniors, and if you guys have noticed by this list, a lot of those other classes are meant for juniors. A push, AP Physics 2, sometimes AP Calculus BC. So you're taking all these classes at once, it's going to make AP Chem a little bit more difficult to manage because AP Chem is one of those classes where you have to be doing sort of consistent practice problems and not just cramming the night before to do well. Now, coming in at the number one spot, I know I hinted at this at the very beginning, it's going to go to AP Physics C. So one thing I want to talk about real quick is sort of the trend you're seeing here. You saw AP Calculus BC, AP Physics 2, AP Physics C, and AP Chem on my list. These are four out of the five on my list are all STEM subjects. In general, with AP classes, some of the STEM subjects do tend to be a little bit harder than the humanities, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people would agree with me, just because with the STEM subjects, every unit builds on each other, right? Like you need to know the first unit of AP Physics C to sort of succeed in the next unit. Um, and so that means you kind of have to be keeping track of and sort of reviewing, you know, every so often those previous units concepts in order to be successful. Now, why AP Physics C over the other um, classes in this list? AP Physics C is simply a lot at once. A lot of schools, especially that offer mechanics and electricity and magnetisms, AP Physics C's, they're two separate courses if you weren't aware, um, at once, that is way too much content. It's so much, it's 17 units. To put that perspective, Calc is about, I think nine or 10 units. AP Physics 2 is about 7 units, AP Physics 1 is like, I think 9 units, so it's like almost double, and it's meant to be double. Um, and it's a very difficult class, um, because you're supposed to take your calculus knowledge and then integrate that with physics. So not only do you have to be good at the physics, but you have to be extremely, extremely strong with your math subject uh, and, and knowledge as well. And so what I noticed, and my advice to you, is to make sure you take AP Physics C at the right time. I'll give you a great example. I had a friend who took AP Physics C and AP Calculus BC as a junior. Um, in the same year. And what was difficult about that is that he actually had to learn the AP Physics C, or excuse me, the AP Calculus BC concepts like integration in the first few weeks of his AP Physics C class because he kind of needed to know the AP Calculus knowledge before. So what I'm, what I, my point here is that you should try to take AP, or AP, excuse me, AP Physics C after you've taken AP Calculus BC and you know you've done well at it, or at least AP Calculus AB. That way you feel more prepared to take the class. But still, this is a very, very difficult class and you should pay a lot, a lot of time to this if you're planning on doing this. All right, y'all, I appreciate y'all sticking around to the end of this video. So one thing I wanna quickly point out is that I don't want this video to shy you away from taking these classes. If you wanna go into STEM, if you wanna become an engineer, physics is important, chemistry is important, calculus is important. So don't shy away from taking those classes just because you think it's hard. Um, I think a lot of times colleges know that it, these classes are difficult. So, you know, if you're earning like a 93, 92, 91, even a 90 in AP Physics C, that's still an, a, a pretty good achievement, you know? Like, it's a difficult class and a lot of times they're aware of that. So I would still encourage you to challenge yourself, but also don't overburden yourself. Don't take all five of these classes at the same time, right? So find a balance, find the right balance and proceed with it. So I hope this video helped you guys a lot. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you in the next one.